Besides me. Well, <laughs> well certainly I, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of work that has not been published yes. uh, out of the national labs. That's that's a fact. Uh, you think they're doing more than they're telling? There must always be a or a, a multiplicity of research efforts. That is the only safe uh, strategy and tactic to adopt in research in general. You should never uh, put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Yeah. Uh, it is new ideas, different ideas. Uh, so you must have a multiplicity of funding, you must have a multiplicity of ideas, and a multiplicity of publication media. And the national authorities, have, of course, have a very important role in that. I don't mean to belabor this point. Let me ask one other question, then we'll move on. Do you believe that the federal government, that the Department of Energy has a lid on this in terms of the development of the concept of cold fusion? Have, has your experimentation gone about as far as it feasibly can without some major additional funding? And uh, by denying that funding, is the lid being kept on this? The innovative, the innovative research uh, will have to come to a halt, yes. The, uh, investigating new possibilities, uh, major significant uh, discoveries, going after things like that will have to be terminated, yes. And, what, I, and what's your reaction to that? Well, it's appalling. I think it's appalling. Now, if that happens, <clears throat> what are the chances of the Japanese walking away with the, some of the patent rights if they can continue to keep staying ahead of the research in this country? We have covered uh, as heavily as we have been able to all areas of this work in, in the university patents. But since we still don't know precisely the mechanism that's going, you know, that's developing its part, it may be something totally different than, than what we've speculated. We don't know that. We don't think so, but it could be, and we won't be the ones to find out. In that case, we could definitely lose Right. I think it is unrealistic to think that uh, uh, in the development of this kind you can protect yourself completely. Forever. I mean, it yeah. is, if it turns out to be useful, it's interesting science, and mm -hmm. there are obviously many ifs behind it. If it turns out to be useful, then of course it will involve many countries, many research scientists, many organizations. So, what, but what one would like to see is an adequate uh, development in the United States and in Utah, say, and wherever that may, and in other laboratories in the United States, uh, and that requires a different approach to the one which has been followed here. You see, up to a point, you could say that there has been a fair amount of money spent in the United States, but it is all at sixes and sevens. The Japanese, of course, great credit to them, organize their work in, in a well-structured manner and say, suppose this is right, what should we do? And that's the path they follow. They don't Here's say, the path, they suppose it is wrong, what should let's, we do? Let's not prove it's wrong, just make the assumption it's right. You're going to spend the money anyway to prove it's wrong. You might as well try to do something with it. Obviously, the competition for these rights is big business. The big business of coal fusion, I guess you could say. We'll explore a little more of that. And also, uh, I know part of your concern is the polarization of attitudes regarding the experimentation on both sides of this. We'll talk about those topics coming up. Stay with us on Eyewitness Newsmakers. Welcome back to Eyewitness Newsmakers. Coal fusion, our topic today. The research developed at the University of Utah and the developers of that uh, concept and research are with us this afternoon. Dr. Stanley Pons with the University of Utah and Dr. Martin Flashman with uh, England Southampton University, also a research scientist at the University of Utah. And also with us today is Eyewitness News Science Specialist Ed Yates. Ed? Gentlemen, let me, let me ask you, if this announcement of your research work had not occurred in a public press conference on March 23rd, would it have followed a more secure path? Um, uh, would it have been safer to follow a policy where it was not a, a released in the public press? In, a piece, in any piece of research, and especially in such a sensitive area, it is always better to be later rather than earlier. So it would have been better, but in my opinion, the same momentum would still have built up. You would have gone the same path, it would no have. matter when you made the announcement. Uh. But how has dealing with the public press affected working on the science? Having to deal with the criticism, uh, the papers the, the, that are questioning your work? Well, you have so much energy to spend on a given thing each day. I mean, you don't have an infinite supply. And we, found, we find that uh, a lot of our energy is wasted by 8 o'clock in the morning answering faxes, telephone calls, uh, things like this, bad news, good news, 
it's a real roller coaster. So it has a, definitely affected our ability to uh, get a lot of science done in the last few months. It's if, getting better. If we had been, uh, if we had published later, the first paper later, we would have been in a better position to correct misapprehensions. Mm -hmm. But if you have a limited amount of time, you cannot counteract the impression which is generated during the polarization of opinion. If you had to look into a crystal ball, <coughs> where, where, where do you see fusion in 1990, in the next 12 months? Hmm. Well, we know where we want to be. Where do you want to be by 1990? Uh, where do you want to be by We want to be on a, in a secure base to uh, devise a demonstration. That is what our immediate objective is. This would be a device that's putting out energy that yes. is useful. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that you can demonstrate the phenomenon in an easy way, not in a sophisticated way, but an easy on the tabletop. An ambiguous way. In an easy and ambiguous There's way. There's been a lot of challenges uh, to your uh, professional research. Do you, what do you say to your critics at this point? Uh, to the people, I mean, you live in this community, a community that takes a great deal of pride in what was developed at the university. Uh, the concept of this. How do you answer them, Dr. Pons, at this point? Well, we simply say that there cannot be literally hundreds now of systematic errors uh, because, of, you know, that's at least the number of positive reports and confirmations that have come along and other developments. So we deny that uh, there can be that many systematic errors, which people say that, you know, the, our critics say that the results are wrong. They're not wrong. Uh, I think it's been confirmed enough now. And, uh, you know, the, the, our response is, if it is right, you know, there's going to be a problem. Gentlemen, we're, all, a large problem. we're almost out of time. Uh, if I can just ask you as we close, uh, has your conviction to cold fusion, the process, that the, has that changed at all, Dr. Fleischman? Not at all. I think we uh, would say we ha the polarization made us look more positive than we were. We do not know the exact nuclear paths. We're mm -hmm. convinced there are nuclear processes going on. And Dr. Bonds? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No question. Gentlemen, we thank you for sharing your time and uh, uh, in a tremendously interesting subject, and we hope to visit with you again soon. And Ed, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. See you again soon on Eyewitness Newsmakers.